विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह कंशा महाराज नीज हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीज स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीज Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, pathmaker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Bhagatji, Shriji Bhagat, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Jai Swami Narayan. There you go. You know, Shriji Bhagat, I want to ask you first. You know, when you watch cartoons, there's always two sides, right? For example, if there's Batman, who's the bad guy, opposite of Batman? Um, I'm guessing you don't watch that? Um, sometimes Superman okay. and sometimes Joker. Okay, and who's the opposite of Superman? Sometimes Batman and sometimes Joker. Okay. Uh, what else superheroes do you have in mind that have a bad guy against them? How about Spider-Man? Yeah. Um, he had goblins. Okay. Green goblins. So, you know, there's two sides, right? One good, one bad. In the same way, good and bad or evil has been going on since the beginning of this earth. There's always been two sides, one good, one bad. Now, he is a man of God who propagates the truth despite suffering imposed by evil. See, when good comes here, what they do is they suffer because the bad, they don't have any kind of compassion for anyone who's good. In the same way, in the Swaminarayan Sampraday, Sadhguru Muktanand Swami, who have we been uh, learning about for the past couple of weeks, his life was something similar, where he had to suffer. Due to his suffering, we are happy today, right now, but we can only realize and recognize this if we take a look inside of his life, his life story, and how he suffered so I want to get into it. One day, Muktan Swami with some saints arrived in Dangadra and resided near the residence of where Vairagis lived. Vairagis meaning bad, bad, bad saints, okay? Meaning these are fake saints. They, uh, they just have their name as they're a saint, but they're really not. They beat up people. Uh, they're very, very bad people, okay? So... <clears throat> Swami was there and he arrived in a village and he uh, w he made a place near those uh, people because there was no other place to stay. This made the Vairagis furious, meaning they m it made them mad because they thought that you know Swami was taking their territory area. They planned to they planned to trouble the saints. They went to the king and tempted him against the saints of Swamran by bribing the king with money. Mukta and Swami had preached to the group of saints that Swami already knew that these were bad guys, but he had no choice at that time. He also had become aware that these bad saints had plotted to uh, tell the king to go against all of them. Swami had preached to the group of saints who were with him that humbleness is the greatest weapon and it is the time to use it. So it's the time to use it now. If you would take any steps against them, people would criticize Bhagwan. Meaning what Swami preached to the santos is that you're, gonna, you're getting into a very, very bad situation. 
So you need to use your weapon. You know how evil has guns and bombs and grenades and rocket launchers, right? You know what good has? Do you know what kind of weapons good has? Nothing, right? Nothing but a heart, nothing but a brain, nothing but two arms and two legs. But their spirit inside, that's very, very strong. Due to that, just by their presence, evil tends to change into good. That's their weapon, their spirit, their spirit inside. It's very, very powerful. And it has only good thoughts of doing good to the others. So Swami is saying that our weapon for today is humbleness. Now in the Vajramut, Bhagwan states that today, Gopalan Swami and also Muktan Swami have such an inclination of offering bhakti with servitude. Gadrada, middle chapter, 62nd Vajramut. You know, when you go to school, right? Do you ever receive those kinds of like certificates of doing really, really good in like academics, like, you know, math or science or? In first grade I did. Yeah. But we just started school, so no one got anything. Yet. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. But you did get it in first grade, right? Yeah. It's a certificate given by your teacher or principal? Teacher. Teacher. Because you did really, really, really well, right? Yeah. In the same manner, in the Vajnamut, Bhagwan is giving a certificate to Muktanan Swami for his humbleness. Only Bhagwan can give a certificate like that. Now, let me ask you, is there a higher certificate than Bhagwan's certificate? No. Because his, his signature is supreme, right? Yes. No one else can match him or even go and give a better certificate than him, right? Yeah. Well, Maharaj himself gave a certificate to Muktan and Swami that you are, you can say you have the inclination, meaning you have such great humbleness and bhakti, meaning devotion towards God, that he, had to, he actually had to say it in this Vatshamrut. And today we remember Swami, Muktan and Swami, for his humbleness, and this story will show us how, okay? So what did Muktan and Swami say to the saints? Your weapon is... Humbleness. Humbleness. Yes. And and don't and if even if they criticize, do not go against them, meaning don't don't fight them, because our Bhagwan's name will become bad, our Bhagwan's reputation will become bad. They came and started omitting harsh words to the saints. They broke the idol of God, articles of worship and musical instruments. One Vairagi had a sharp pointed spear in his hand. He put it at the chest of Kalpeshwaran Swami. Then Swami said, I am so strong to break this spear into small pieces like mustard seeds. But it's not the command of our God. This enraged the Vairagis further. Meaning, Kalpeshwaran Swami, there was another Swami who was very, very powerful that he could even break the spear. But he said that it's not our wish of our God, so I'm not going to do anything like that. The saints received severe beatings, and some had become unconscious, such that even Muktan Swami was really hurt. Meaning Muktan Swami became really hurt. He got beat up by these guys. They punched him. They threw him to the ground. Ever get into a fight? I got into a fight and went to a principal. Okay. Uh, was it a physical fight? No. Okay. This was physical, okay? And what had happened was that Swami got beat up pretty good. Now, nevertheless, without considering the, the status of his bodily inflictions, meaning Swami was hurt, you know, he was bruised, maybe even had like something broken, you don't know. But without looking at his body, he started to consult the health of others who were wounded, meaning other santos. He started to take care of the other santos who, would, who were hurt bad as well. Because remember, Muktan Swami is the mother-like figure in satsang. He's like a mother. So what does a mother do? 
takes care of their child any way possible, gives them food. If, it's, if he's hurt, give him a Band-Aid, like that. Swami also, in that same kind of fashion, what he did was he helped the saints around who were hurt. Therefore, he went to the king for justice. The king insulted the saints even more due to being blackmailed, pre-handed. As a result, the sadhus departed immediately and reached Gadpur, where Bhagwan was. When Sri Hari was informed of these incidences, his eyes filled with tears. He was pained with the cruelty of Vairagis. He was, he was proud of his saints for their tolerance and saintliness. Bhagwan became very happy, but also hurt at the same time because he didn't like to see his saints hurt, right? Beat up. But he was happy because what weapon did Santos use? Nothing, but they did use something. It starts with an H. Humbleness. Remember? What weapon did they use? Humbleness. Exactly. Due to that, they won. So Bhagwan also became pleased. He said, in fact, you have defeated them with the weapon of humbleness. Thus, the saints, knowing Sri Hari was pleased, took a breath of relief and suddenly their pain vanished. Meaning, Bhagwan became so pleased. You know how they were hurt really, really bad. Some were bleeding. Everything disappeared. It was like they were normal again, like they were not beat up at all. Bhagwan did this. Would you like that kind of superpower? Yes. <laughs> I mean, so to I won't. To heal others or to be healed when you're hurt? I don't know. Both? Yeah, kind of both. Okay, me too, okay? I agree. Uh, so Bhagwan did this. There was animosity for the name of Swami Arun, who's who followed the acts of violence. They assumed Nuktan Swami to be a foremost saint in the association of Lord Swami Arun and made a target to kill him. Now what happened? These bad, bad guys made a target to kill Swami. Not beat him up, kill him, okay? Omniscient Sri Hari knew this and notified Muktan Swami in advance. Bhagwan knew this because Bhagwan could read minds, right? So he told Swami that this is what they're planning to do. Swami, if a dog were to bite at that time, we throw bread in front of it. The dog will stop barking. Similarly, when someone wanted to beat us up, we receive them with garlands. Their anger will be subsided. Now, what Maharaj is showing is a technique which can only be used by very, very great saints. Suppose, I'll give you an example in your life. Suppose you have someone that doesn't like you in school, okay? Now, he comes and he's ready to beat you up, okay? He wants to get into a fight with you. Now, Obviously, you don't want to get into a fight, but he wants to fight you. So he's ready and he comes. And you know what you do? You take out a garland, you know, like a full nohar, and you put it around him. How would that make him feel? Happy. Why so? Wouldn't he want to beat you up? Yeah. But you put a garland around him. What will he feel like? He's the biggest. What? He's the biggest of all. Okay. Due to that, he would become happy, right? Yeah. He wouldn't. He wouldn't get angry at all. In the same way, that's what Maharaj was teaching Swami, that if someone comes and becomes angry at you and comes to take you down, call them, invite them very, very nicely, and put a heart around them so that their anger would subside and they would become calm, meaning their ma mind would become calm. There is a story of Puja Guruji and how he faced a similar situation, okay? So you know how Guruji was the chairman of Vartal, right? Meaning a head position in, in Vartal Mandir. Now, at that time, there was a small temple, very, very small temple in Madhya Pradesh, meaning it's a state 
in the middle of India. It's called Madhya Pradesh. You know how we have 50 states? It's in India, there's multiple states, and this is called Madhya Pradesh. It's not, it's next to Gujarat. And is it like an island? It's not an island, it's a state, but no problem. Uh, so there is a city called Jal Jalgao. It's a small city, and what had happened was the temple was located inside the city. The town, village, you can say. It was a very, very small village, very, very small temple, but it had a lot of land. Now, what had happened was, on paper, it said that Vartal Mandir owned this whole area, this mandir and all the property around it. But you know what happened? At that time, before Guruji had even become the chairman of Vartal, no one had even looked after this piece of land and that small mandir. So it was overtaken by these four evil brothers. Okay? Now, what they did was they ran the mandir, the small mandir, and what they started to do was they started to use the land as their personal cropping, you know, farming area without informing the, the temple, Vartal Mandir, that we're using your property. Now, this started to go on and go on until Pujaguruji became chairman. Now, Pujaguruji found out that this was happening where these four brothers were pretty much misusing the land uh, and, you know, using it in ways where they obtained money, which was illegal. And due to that, this is not right because this whole mandir and the whole property belongs to Vartal Mandir. So due to that, Pujya Guruji drove there to Madhya Pradesh, which was like 10 hours away, 10, 12 hours away. He drove there with saints and he stayed there at a small house next to the where the, the mandir was located, okay? Now, what had happened was that the four brothers found out that Puja Guruji had came and he was asking for the land back because on paper it said that the land belonged to Vartal Mandir. You have no right to, you know, use it for your personal expenses or anything like that. So, these guys at the night, midnight, they come with swords and knives and Puja Guruji is inside the small house sleeping. These guys are drinking alcohol, the four brothers and a group of other bad people, their friends, okay? There's like 20 of them. They come to the house and they're shouting outside the home, saying, come out, saying to Guruji, come out, come out, you fake sadhu, come out. We want to take you down. We want to beat you up to Guruji. This is a real story. Now, you know the Hari Bhagat, of the owner of the house where Guruji was staying in, he was there as well and he saw from the window that Puja Guruji is, they're calling Gu Puja Guruji to pretty much, you know, tear him apart. So Puja Guruji, he's a very, very light sleeper. So by hearing these noises, he woke up immediately and he's like, what's going on? You know, what's happening? So the Hari Bhagat did not want to inform Guruji. So he said, nothing, nothing, go back to sleep, Guruji. Go back to sleep, it's just a, a couple of people outside. But Guruji knew what was happening. So he said, really, what is going on? So he's like, these people who are the pujaris of the temple, meaning they're handling the, the caretakers of the temple, they're, they're here to fight you, to, to get the land that, that you're trying to receive back. They're trying to avoid that. They want to, you know, pretty much beat you up, take you down. So Guruji said, no problem. Guruji got out from his bed, stood up, and went outside alone with nothing, no weapons, nothing, just the mada in his hand. There was 20 people who were evil, who had swords and knives and were there in front of him in a line. And there was just Puja Guruji himself. You know what happened? They were very, very angry. And just by seeing Puja Guruji, they became very, very peaceful. They wanted to kill Guruji, 
Yet, when they had the darshan of Guruji, when he came, they became very, very calm. Nothing, like they didn't want to do anything. You know what? Without Guruji saying even a word, you know what happened? They all went and they bowed down to Guruji and asked for forgiveness. Guruji did not say a word. He just got up, stood up, and looked at them. And all of them bowed down to him and started to ask for forgiveness, cry. Said, it's our mistake. This is all, this all belongs to Vartal Mandir. Please do take all this. Uh, we apologize. Puja Guruji said, it's very, very late. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. Just go back to your homes, go to sleep. Come and meet me in the morning tomorrow. So what had happened was, Guruji, afterwards in the morning, after he doing puja, all those people came, and they again, they showered, they worshipped Bhagwan, and then they came with clean clothes to meet Guruji. And Guruji said, what were you saying again? I, uh, I didn't recall. He said, we, we're asking for forgiveness because uh, we uh, insulted you very much, and due to that, you might have been upset at us. Guruji said, no problem. And without even that, the guys brought the documents and said, the whole property is yours. We won't do anything to this property. The mandir, nothing. Please do take it. It's Vartal Mandirs. And afterwards, in just a couple years back, a whole new temple was built due to Puja Guruji's, you can say, steadiness. Due to his, you can say, how powerful he is. In that way, we can see that, you know, how Muktan Swami, he was there and he got beat up, but he didn't do anything back. In the same way, Guruji got insulted very, very badly. But as a sadhu, as a saint, a saint's weapon, a saint's quality is compassion. He has compassion for others. He tolerates pain of others. Not only that, but he remains very, very steady in the most worst situations. Not only that, but he only wishes the good for others. These are the characteristics of a sadhu. And Puja Guruji, you can see, possesses all three of these. And due to that, those people could not say anything. They just gave the land and went away. And they became devotees. And they wore ganties and did tilak chandlo. And now they go to mandir every day. All to Puja Guruji's grace there. So, showing that, we can see that our Puja Guruji that we have received is none other than Swami himself with his qualities. Muktan Swami himself with his qualities. Now, the Puja Dada Guruji also possessed the same kind of qualities, Ajat Shatru, meaning he didn't have any kind of enemies. He never possessed any enemies. Do you have any enemies? No. No one at all? No. You sure? You want to think about that? What I about used to, but no one anymore. No one, right? Yeah. What about that guy from first grade? That was your enemy? He used to, now he isn't. He's your friend now? No. He's just there, right? He is there. But you don't, you don't, there's nothing, no problems now, right? No. Good. The next day, Muktan Swami with a group of 20 sadhus departed for Jetalpur. Somehow the Vairagis found out about this and their chief with his disciples ca camped at the bank of a lake to conspire trouble at Muktan Swami's residence. Afterwards, determined to uproot the name Swami Narayan by killing Muktan Swami, they set out with weapons again. This is number two, trying to kill Swami. As they reached to where the saints were residing, Muktan Swami spotted them immediately. He remembered the words of Sri Hari. He went to meet them from ahead with and with the support of other two other saints. He took garlands and coconuts and greeted them with sweet words. He invited them inside and offered seats and then prostrated before them. Swami did dunwats before them, put on garlands and gave him coconuts. Those guys were there to come and beat up Swami, right? Kill Swami. And what did Swami do? He did dunwats to them. What did Swami do? He put on garlands, meaning full heart. He gave them to them. Would you do that in that situation if someone was there, had a big sword in their hand? 
And was just ready. He was, you were right in front of him. What if I knew. If you knew what? If I knew um, that um, I, sh- I should not do something to them. So no, I'll no, but suppose you didn't know, what would you do? Would you run or would you fight back? What would you do? I would run. Just run away? Run away and hide. Run away and hide. What if he was really, really fast and he was just going after you and after you? I'll climb. Climb where? Up a tree. Up a tree. What if he had a saw to chop down the tree? Then I'll climb on top of a rooftop of a house. What if he climbed up with you? Um, I would, I will, um. What would you do? Hide somewhere. See, there's so many problems in running away or fighting back because if you fight back, you might get beat up, right? But there's no problems in giving praise back to others. That's what Swami is teaching. No matter what someone does to you, maybe someone swears at you at school or something like that, don't take their bad quality or don't get into a fight. Take their good quality. If you can't take a quality, just walk away. But do not run or do not insult back because that's not a way of a satsangi. You understand? Muktan Swami, what did he do? He prostrated, he did Dunwood's back. In the same way, we should learn from his message that if someone comes to beat us up or insult us, just like that guy in first grade, instead of fighting back or saying something back, just stay s- still see what he has to say, and then move away. Or, if not, on top of his insults, praise him. doesn't matter. There is no loss in that. He can't tell on you to the principal for saying good things about him. He can only tell on you for the principal if you say bad things about him, right? If you, if you call him an idiot, yeah, then he can say that he, Shriji called me an idiot. But if you say... You know, I'm sorry. I don't want to do. Uh, I don't want to get into a fight. You're such a nice uh, person. You're really good at drawing. I don't know, whatever, some kind of good quality. He can't go to the principal and say, you know, Sriji said I'm really good at drawing. He has nothing on you, right? In the same way, you should learn in that factor throughout your life. Now, in second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, so on and so forth. Instead of fighting back, or instead of insulting back, you should praise back or walk away, okay? Good. So that's what Swami did. All the saints were listening attentively. Muktan Swami continued, continued, only with the utterance of the names of these pious saints are the sins of previous births washed away. Such admiring words spread the wave of pleasure amongst the Vaidagis. The Vaidagis' minds became calm and they had forgotten their mission. The chief Vairagi, meaning the main boss, who is Muktan, he asked, who is Muktan Swami among all of you present here? I am Muktan Swami, Swami replied. Are you, are you the Muktan Swami who is the most honored and widely known in the Swamiyan sect? Then Muktan Swami said, I am the only Muktan Swami, no one else. The chief Vairagi was surprised and enraged among the other Vairagis for misleading him about Muktan Swami's behavior. Finally, those who had come to kill Muktan Swami bowed down respectfully and left. This is how Swami was. This is how Swami's life was. Now, we're very, very young, but we should also learn from Swami's life that he also had enemies, but he didn't do anything back. In the same way, now you're getting older and older. You should learn that no matter what anyone comes and says, in Mandir or outside of Mandir or anywhere in the school or anywhere else that we have no right to say something back. If we can't bear the insult, then just walk away. But if not, we can take a good quality of them, right? Even there is even the worst person in the world has at least one small good quality inside of them. Bhagwan has just put it inside of everyone, some kind of small quality. We just have to find it and look at it. You see what I'm saying? So this is the life of Muktanan Swami. 
and how uh, he didn't have any enemies and how he possessed the utmost highest sadhuda, saintliness. And due to his saintliness, we remember him right now, 250 years later. And there's books written after him and there's many, many gathas and speeches and whatnot done on in the memory of Swami due to his weapon in the form of humbleness. Saying this, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. वर्णिवेशरमणीयदर्शनम मंदहासरुचिरानामुज पूजिम सुरनरोतमुदा 
धर्मनंदनम विचित धर्मनंदनम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज ने जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइट शेवर बी लॉर्ड घनश्याम महाराज पात्म कटोल लिब्रेशन पूज्य पात गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ ड्यूटीज जय स्वामी नारायण इन द वचन अमृत भगवान स्वामी नारायण हिमसेल्फ नैरेटेड द स्टोरीज ऑफ हिज ओन ड्यूटीज एंड आफ्टर नैरेटिंग मैनी ड्यूटीज स्टोरी रिगार्डिंग द अनफ्लिंचिंग फेथ इन द फॉर्म ऑफ भगवान एंड भगवान से कांतिक संत वट दे हैव डेडिकेटेड फॉर भगवान और संत और वट दे हैव रिनाउंस फॉर भगवान और संत दैट वॉज द स्टोरीज नाउ टूडे Maharaj is going to narrate the stories from the life of Morji Brahmachari his personal attendant Morji Brahmachari he was from beginning Bra- uh, Maharaj personal attendant and Maharaj also very much like his affectionate devotion towards him why because maharaj himself says in the vachanavrut one who is not performing seva with the shraddha then that seva is not i do not like too much that seva and on the other hand if one who offers seva with shraddha then the seva perform along with the shraddha that bhagwan like too much and murji brahmachari has that much shraddha that no one has that shraddha to perform bhagwan's seva and even more than that when one is specially appointed as a personal attendant of bhagwan himself then how that person be pure as well as how that person is totally renounced minded from the worldly task so that he always engage his mind in the bhagwan seva that at this time bhagwan want to eat or this time bhagwan want to drink some water or this time bhagwan want to go to sleep in this way for becoming a personal attendant that is not a easy task but to per- to perform bhagwan seva time to time that is the main important thing and murji brahmachari he has all kind of these qualities even though he was not too much literate meaning he was not too much like scholar but still without any scriptural knowledge murji brahmachari he was one of the best servant of bhagwan swami narayan and in the many vachanamrits bhagwan himself explain the glories of murji brahmachari in the 52nd vachanamrut of krida second chapter maharaj himself says in the vachanamrut that if a wise person is scolded by someone he would in turn consider the scolder's virtues on the other hand if someone offers some useful advice to a fool the fool would be offended in that res- in that respect murji brahmachari and ratanji are never offended that that is why i get along very well with them and in the same vachanam maharaj also says i also i, I like one who serves with shraddha conversely if someone who does not have shraddha were to bring meal uh, bring me a meal i would not like their food or if they were to bring some clothes i would not like to wear them if it or if they were to perform my puja i would not like that puja if however one offers something with shraddha i like it very much now what is this shraddha and even more in the vachanamrut maharaj says even if one offers bhakti with shraddha if one becomes jealous of someone else who comes to offer their bhakti then 
I I do not like that. Thus, I very much prefer one who offers bhakti with sraddha and without jealousy. Now, how we can say that Mulji Brahmachari has that much sraddha for serving Bhagwan, or he has a pure heart, and if he was he was often scolded by even Maharaj without any fault. Still, he remained in the service of Bhagwan, and even he imbibe or even he sees virtues in Bhagwan's words or Bhagwan's life. There was one incident happened in Mohdi Brahmachari's life. Once, as as a uh, personal attendant of Maharaj, Mohdi Brahmachari was given a seva by Maharaj himself to polish his shoes. At that time, Maharaj and Santo they uh, they would like to use. Uh, very hard and very tough to wear the shoes made with the leather but the leather was not too smooth like today's and that is why they need to to be polished with the oil so Maharaj gave some devotees offered Maharaj a new pair of shoes and Maharaj gave that shoes to Murji Brahmachari for polishing with the oil so that it cannot be heard to Maharaj's feet. So Maharaj gave this seva to Brahmachari as he was appointed as his personal attendant. But Murji Brahmachari, he was busy in Maharaj's personal seva. Still, while he gets some time, he was doing his seva to polishing Maharaj's shoes. At that time, when another devotee came to have a Maharaj darshan, and he saw that Murji Brahmachari is doing Maharaj seva like he was doing a polishing of new pair of Maharaj shoes then the devotee asked Brahmachari Brahmachari you are personal servant of Maharaj you have day and night you have too much seva of Maharaj but as I am a householder devotee and I live not all the days with Maharaj so I cannot have a chance to do such kind of Maharaj Seva. So if you are going to do another Seva and please give me this Seva, then it is very beneficial for me. Please give me this Seva of Maharaj so that I can have a chance to do Seva of Maharaj. Then Br- uh, Murji Brahmachari, he was very frank and he said, it's okay. This is Maharaj Seva. If I can, uh, if I'll do any other thing that was also, that will be also Maharaj Seva. So please take this Seva do this then the devotee he was polishing Maharaj Maharaj's new pair of shoes then and Brahmachari he went off he was busy now for another seva of Maharaj so meanwhile Maharaj came out of the, his room and Maharaj saw that the not a Brahmachari but the devotee who was polishing his new pair of shoes then Maharaj asked the devotee, "Who gave this? Uh, who gave you to, to this seva to you?" Then the devotee said, "Maharaj, I asked this seva from Brahmachari." Then Maharaj asked him, "Where is Brahmachari? Call him right now. I want to talk with him." Then the devotee ran towards Brahmachari and he informed Brahmachari that Maharaj call you. Then Brahmachari, without any delay. Uh, whatever he was doing at the time, he left and ran for Maharaj. Brahmachari came, Maharaj asked him, Brahmachari, why did you give this seva to this devotee? I have, give, uh, I have g- given you this seva as you are appointed my personal attendant. And this is your duty to give your seva to others. This is your way to serve me. You are not a but uh, you are not a perfect devotee or you are not a perfect servant for me. You are not not a perfect or a true attendant for of me. So now it is better to serve the other part of satsang instead of serving me. So from today you are not remain in my personal service. Then Brahmachari said, it's okay Maharaj, but now tell me what to do. What kind of seva I have to do? Then Maharaj gave him command. Okay, no problem. We have a huge 
or we have a mass of devotees in the satsang so traveling in the different different villages not here uh, not near from the garuda but you have to go there in north gujarat or you know middle part of gujarat there you have to serve the devotees while traveling their villages and do the katha varta to all of those devotees and not only that but do not eat and <coughs> do not come again here for even for my darshan only you have to come when i send a message for you then brahmachari say it's okay maharaj i'll follow your command then maharaj uh, then brahmachari after getting blessings of maharaj and doing darshan of maharaj he went for the traveling in the different villages after traveling for 6 8 months there was a summer season and in the summer season there was a very tasty ripe mangoes in the charodar so the devotees they have many ripe mangoes for maharaj that was very sweet and tasty so they like to offer those mangoes to maharaj but at the time maharaj was staying in gadda and there would be no any plan to go there in vartal or any other part of gujarat for marat so devotees decided to go there to gadda but there was no one is ready to go there to uh, go there uh, gadda for sending those mangoes to maharaj so all devotees they gathered and they decided if we give these mangoes to mulji brahmachari and if he went there then maharaj will eat our mango then they requested brahmachari maharaj uh, they requested mulji brahmachari this is the situation no one is able to go there with these mangoes and uh, because we are all busy in our business and our jobs in the farm so now if you become please upon us and if you want to eat want to feed this mango to maharaj then please this is a seva this is an opportunity so that uh, if you you would go there then maharaj will eat our mangoes then brahmachari said it's okay this is also good for me because i have also not did darshan of maharaj from last 6 or 8 months so if i would be there with mangoes then i have a chance to have a darshan of maharaj then he brahmachari also become pleased upon those devotees and with the mangoes carried in the big bucket and he put the that bucket on his head and brahmachari with 120 pounds of mangoes brahmachari left for gadda even in the way he has many obstacles happen still without any thing or without even stopping anywhere brahmachari was walking towards garda and after a week when brahmachari reached there in garda with the mangoes first maharaj even did not talk with him even brahmachari was doing dandwa to maharaj still maharaj even did not look at him then even brahmachari Uh, even maharaj be have with him like that but still brahmachari has no any kind of uh, reaction or reflection on his face he has the same kind of joy he has the same kind of uh, expression or affection for maharaj everything w- was the same like before then one day what he went to maharaj and he requested maharaj why are you doing this even this brahmachari he carried 120 pounds of mangoes for you he had no any kind of his personal gain or his personal benefit then why are you not looking even at him or why are you not calling or why are you not talking with him then maharaj said it's okay if that is the matter then please call brahmachari then that duty call brahmachari that maharaj is calling you then brahmachari 
spent there uh, while folding his hand please ask maharaj what is the seva for me then maharaj become extremely pleased upon murji brahmachari and he said okay now your all kind of uh, this uh, all kind of your not coming gadada rules and everything is done now you are come back to my personal service in this way maharaj did this charitra for showing us that how much affection or how much faith in brahmacharya brahmacharya's life that uh, brahmacharya Bra- brahmacharya's life for maharaj that he even maharaj called him without any fault or even maharaj gave him punishment without any kind of fault of his even maharaj be have with him like even not maharaj behave with any other ordinary person even whether that person was not de- uh, not a devotee still maharaj not behave like that still brahmachari has no any doubt in maharaj form or he has no any kind of problem with maharaj or even he remain with the same kind of affection or same kind of faith for maharaj as he had before he was doing seva of maharaj so this is what his faith in the maharaj divine form and that is why maharaj liked too much his seva because he has too much shraddha that he carried 120 pounds of mangoes from very far distance the another incident shows his shraddha once in vartal maharaj was doing katha in the sabha at the time maharaj was sitting on the rear part of the mandir meaning a back part of the mandir not on the mandir uh, on upper level but on the ground behind the mandir maharaj was doing sabha and he was doing katha and at the time mulji brahmachari he was on the mandir so at the time Uh, murji brahmachari was uh, doing pradakshina in the mandir so as maharaj want to show brahmachari shraddha to all of the santos and devotees so maharaj call brahmachari murji brahmachari i become very thirsty please give me some water immediately then murji brahmachari without th- as he listen that maharaj become thirsty and maharaj want water he want to drink then immediately murji brahmachari from very high like maybe 20 feet brahmachari without asking or without any thinking what will happen he just dive from he was ju- like jump from 20 feet height and then after getting down he run for Mar- uh, run to maharaj room and he gave maharaj a glass of water in the sabha then maharaj asked him brahmachari why did you not think if you fall down from this much height then your hands or your feet or any other part of your body would will be damaged then uh, brahmachari said uh, then maharaj said this brahmachari he was uh, not a nay but he was very he has very or he has all kind of wisdom in his mind that for maharaj what he cannot do in this way just as maharaj defined the def, uh, define the person's characteristic in the third vachana of the loya that one who has faith in the form of maharaj and sant coupled with the coupled with their glories then he can do everything for maharaj and sant what would a person who has faith in god and his sant coupled with the knowledge of their glory not do for the sake of god and his son for them he would renounce everything like his family renounce his free fear of public ridicule renounce a kingdom renounce pleasures renounce wealth renounce his wife and in the case of a woman she would renounce her husband so in this definition mara says what he w- what would a person who has faith in god and his son coupled with the knowledge of their glory not do for the sake of bhagwan and his son so brahmachari can do everything for maharaj and his son and that is why he 
jump from very high. So in this way, Maharaj also revealed his greatness in the Sabha. Many other incidents regarding this Murji Brahmacharya's life in the what uh, in many other scriptures in our sampradaya. But in short, we, we we can say that he has unclinching faith in the form of Maharaj and as his personal attendant he has even one who remain every day near to someone then definitely he has any kind of fold finds in that person even one stay with Bhagwan, then he has also when Bhagwan performs some human like actions then at, at the time the devotee who stay near to Bhagwan. He has maybe doubt in the form of Bhagwan whether this is the Bhagwan or not. But Murji Brahmachari was not like that. He has unflinching faith in the form of Bhagwan that even Maharaj can do what whatever kind of action, human like action or divine action. At this all time, he has the same affection, same bhakti, same devotion, same faith in the form of Maharaj. That is why uh, he was extremely dear to Maharaj. Uh, also in many of the Vachanamrus, like uh, 47th Vachanamrus of Garuda, second chapter, Maharaj says, uh, just as the householders or renunciant servers, we should also realize their greatness. For example, Murji Brahmachari realizes, reala realizes my greatness and serves me. In the same way, I realize his greatness. Thus, as the householders serve as uh, so us by providing food and clothes, we should uh, we should also realize their greatness and serve them by preaching to them. In this way, we should force to fraternity among devotees of God by realizing each other's greatness. So while even Maharaj says, I understood Murji Brahmacharya's greatness. So how was his devotion, how was his level of faith that even Bhagwan himself understood his greatness? We understood Bhagwan's greatness, that's not the main thing. But Bhagwan even says, I understood your greatness. That is the greatness of devotee. In the third Vachana Vrata Amdavad, Maharaj says, Sriji Maharaj gave the reply to Sukhmani's question. Even though Murji Brahmacharya and Ratanji are not extremely intelligent, they have an intense yearning for liberation, so they do indeed know how to do whatever pleases God. So in this Vajramrut, in this answer, Maharaj says, Murji Brahmachari, he was not an extremely intelligent, but still he has intense desire to attain liberation. So it is not that Murji Brahmachari did not attain liberation. He was directly coming from Aksardam with Maharaj. Otherwise, no one can serve Maharaj personally in this way. And no one behave in such a way that even Maharaj likes to stay with him. But Maharaj says he has intense yearning for liberation, and that is why they do. In, uh, he do. He does indeed know how to do whatever pleases God. So Maharaj want to say even one is intelligent or not that doesn't matter. But who desire to get Rajip of Bhagwan or his Ekantik Sant, that person can do everything for the pleasure of Maharaj and Sant. So in this way, Murji Brahmachari was not intelligent, but still he knows all the ways to please Maharaj. In the 26th Vachanabhadra last chapter, Maharaj says, if a person has dharma predominating in his mind and if he has the qualities of an ascetic in that he firmly believes, one who performs pious or impious karmas in this realm will undoubtedly receive the respective fruit of those karmas in the, re in the realm beyond. And if he having such firm beliefs, if concerned about his own reputation by thinking, if I do something moral, uh, if I do something immoral, what will people think of me? Then he will not become bound by any object, woman or others. Wherever he goes, for example, Mayaram Bhatt, Murji Brahmachari, Nishkulanan Swami, and those of that caliber will never falter even if they encounter woman, wealth, etc. 
So this statement Maharaj never, Maharaj did not give for any other person in satsang. Maharaj gave this statement that even though they have any kind of contact or even they encounter women or wealth, still they remain as they are today. So Moji Brahmachari, he has many, uh, many such incidents in his life that even though sometimes Maharaj sent him to send a message to female devotees, even once Maharaj denied him not to touch any female, and once he was after getting bath in the Gela, he coming back to Darbargar for service of Maharaj, and Maharaj instructed him not to touch any female devotees. So at the time, female devotees did, they decided to ask Pramchari Maharaj some Leela, Charitra. So at the time, the female devotees in a group, they stopped Brahmachari and they asked, Brahmachari, please narrate us the Maharaj any Leela or any Charitra so that we can memorize it or we can remember that incident and we can enjoy divine peace in our mind. But uh, as Brahmachari wanted to go in uh, Darbargar so that he can join in Bhagwan's service, but this female devotees group, they check him not to go without narrating a Charitra of Maharaj. And at the time, Murji Brahmachari, he forcefully tried to go there in Darbargar. So at the time, one female devotee touched that Murji Brahmachari. And so Murji Brahmachari, he said, Ame Adyane, Ame Adyane, like talking in this way to female devotees. He just, while touching all the other devotees, he just run towards Maharaj. So in this way, even Maharaj say he encounter any woman or wealth or any kind of company, still he remain aloof from all those kind of material things. And in the six Vachanaps of Karyani, Maharaj says, devotees such as Mulji Brahmachari, Somla Khachari and others who have been staying close to me for so many years know my nature and realize beside the devotees of God, Maharaj does not have affection for anyone else. In fact, Maharaj is not affected by anything, just like Akas. In this manner, those who constantly stay near me know my nature. So Mulji Brahmachari was the one who constantly stay with Maharaj. So he knew very well Bhagwan's nature. Otherwise, to know or to understand Bhagwan's nature or, or Bhagwan's intents behind doing any action, that is not possible for any ordinary person. But who has the complete pleasure or complete Rajipo of Maharaj? And if Maharaj decided to show that person or that devotee, his personal preference, then and then that devotee or that person can understand Bhagwan's nature or Bhagwan's preference or Bhagwan's intents behind the doing any action. And Murji Brahmachari, he was one of them, one of those devotees who understand Maharaj, Maharaj's nature. So in this way, Murji Brahmachari has unflinching faith in the form of Bhagwan, even though without any fault Maharaj called him. Still he imbibe or still he shows virtues in Bhagwan's form and even he has too much Shraddha for Bhagwan so that he can never think for his own self when he was doing Maharaj Seva. So this is what Murji Brahmachari's story Maharaj had narrated in the Vachanamrut third of Loya. Sri Ganesham Maharaj.